your team has achieved 80% code coverage or perhaps 90% code coverage or even 100% code coverage. The question is, are your tests actually protecting you against regression bugs, which is the primary purpose of tests? Today, we will see that having 100% code coverage does not mean that your tests are actually protecting you against regression bugs. And we will also learn about the shortcomings of code coverage uh, as a metric due to these issues, as well as the solution, which is the usage of mutation testing as a metric to help us actually see whether our tests are protecting us against regression bugs. Let's get started with a simple example of a calculator. So here we can see we have a calculator class and it has the add method and it is doing some addition. So relatively simple. And here we can see we have a test class, but we can also see that we are not executing this method uh, at all. So let's see uh, what happens when we run unit tests with coverage. What metrics do we get? So now uh, we're basically running the code coverage metrics and let's see the results. So here we can see uh, this key metric line coverage is 0%, which is not surprising because we're not covering it. And we can also see this red part here indicating that this line is not covered. As we can see here, the problem is that we have 0% code coverage and that it's not covered. So let's write a test so that we can get from 0% coverage to 100% uh, code coverage. All that this involves is ensuring that this line of code is executed by the test. So I can create a calculator and I can call the method With two and three so I'm executing this line and now I will expect that it will be covered so let's run the un unit tests again with code coverage and let's see the results and we can now see from our results that we got to a hundred percent line coverage and we can see that this is green indicating that the line was covered so now we've seen that we were able to get 100% code coverage by ensuring that all of our tests are executing the source code lines. The question is, is this our test good enough? Does it protect us against regression bugs? So for example, let's say a developer one day accidentally switches from this plus to a minus. The question is, will the tests detect this issue? So let's run the tests. We can see here that the tests still continue to pass. This is not a good thing. Uh, the tests have not alerted us that we've introduced a regression bug. I can even introduce a more radical regression bug by not doing anything at all and running the test. And again, the tests are not able to detect uh, regression bugs at all. And if we observe carefully, we could see that this is caused due to a missing assertion. So the fact that we have a missing assertion is something that was not able to be detected by our code coverage metric. And this is why we were able to write a test which executes the source code, but it is not testing anything. There are no assertions at all, and it meant that regression bug bugs were allowed to go through. As we've seen, uh, having 100% code coverage cannot help us detect that we have missing assertions. 
So let's now look at a metric which actually is able to tell us that we have missing assertions. And this is called mutation testing. So I am going to be running pit test, which is a mutation test tool runner for Java. I'm running it. And let's have a look at the results which are produced, which we can see in the build folder, reports, pit test, uh, and I'm just going to reload it just to get the latest results. And here what we can see is, uh, we can see this index file, and now I'm going to proceed to open this up in the browser. So let's um, let's look at this report here. We can see that we have 100% line coverage, but we have 0% mutation coverage overall. And we can even see it here at this uh, for the calculator class specifically. So line coverage is 100%, and mutation score is 0%. And we can also see the explanations of it. So the way that this mutation test tool was working was it introduced some regression bugs into lines of code, such as replacing this plus instead of minus or returning zero. And it could see that the tests were not failing, that the tests were not detecting these mutants, the regression bugs, essentially. And that is why it resulted in 0% mutation coverage, indicating to us that we have missing assertions. Since the mutation coverage report indicated to us a 0% uh, percent score, so now we will go and add back the assertions that our test needed all along. So getting back to our code, we see our test and we see our source file Let's add the assertion that we need. So we can assert that. Let's call this the result. We can assert that our result is equal to the expected result, which is uh, 5. So now that we have this assertion, Let's run mutation testing again. So I'm running pit test again. So now that we've run the mutation testing again, let's have a look at the generated reports. So the latest report is here and I'm going to open it up in our browser. So, so we can see here in our browser that we have this time a 100% mutation score for the calculator class. So both the line coverage is 100% and the mutation coverage is 100%. And we can see here that when the mutation testing tool tried to apply certain mutants, so introducing regression bugs like switching from plus to minus or doing return zero, that our tests were failing, which was a good thing the tests were able to detect regression bugs which is the whole purpose of tests. So today what we've seen is the following. We've seen the case that we had tests which had 100% code coverage but zero assertions. This was not able to be detected by the code coverage metric because the code coverage metric was only concerned with execution of our code, but not the verification of it. Thus, it was not sensitive to the fact that there were no assertions. It did not recognize that as a problem at all. That's why we were able to have a coverage 100%, but no assertions. However, the other metric, which is called mutation testing, was able to detect the missing assertions. More specifically, when we had the test with the missing assertion, we got 100% code coverage, but 0% mutation coverage, which helped 
indicate to us that we did have missing assertions. And then after we added the adequate assertions that we needed and we re-ran mutation testing, that's when we got both 100% code coverage that we had before, that's unchanged, but we went from 0% mutation coverage to 100% mutation coverage. And this new test was able to effectively detect regression bugs. So this meant if we introduced regression bugs into the source code, that the tests would fail, thereby picking up the regression bug. So this means that mutation testing is a really useful uh, mechanism. It helps us have assurance that our tests are protecting us against regression bugs, which is the primary purpose of tests. Thank you everyone for watching today. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and see you next time.